Hey, all right, we're going live. Hi, it's Coach Dan here. And Coach Lori. She's in as a guest. I'm a guest today. She showed up and I said, come join me for this. So, um, what we're doing is uh, a little experiment. So, one of the things that uh, we do with our clients, not every week, but a lot of weeks, is something I call Coffee with Coach Dan. And... Um, Usually what I do is I cover topics that people have asked me questions on. If I don't have a lot of questions, I'll just randomly pick topics, although I much prefer questions. It's an opportunity for people to um, ask a so-called expert on nutrition and fitness. Uh, I hope to think, I'd like to think that I am somewhat of an expert. Um, and, you know, get get our answers. And, you know, we'll get various things. Uh, people see things in social media. Uh, people see things on the news and so on and so forth, talk to friends. And, uh, you know, the caveat that we always tell people is um, we're going to give you the straight, honest answer, okay? And if we don't know an answer, we're going to say that and get back to you with an answer because uh, there are things we don't know, believe it or not. Um, but one of the things I think that we see, um, and many of you have seen, is there's a lot of information out there especially on something like Facebook where we're live now, and people uh, take it as gospel. And my friends, more often than not, it's not. So um, before we get into it, just real quick, um, if you have questions you want to ask us, um, you can put it in the comments, um, and hopefully we will see them. Uh, and, or if you want to comment on something we say, anything like that, interact with us. That's what we would love to have. That's the purpose behind this. Um, and then the other thing we do ask, if you would be so kind, is if you'll hit the old like on this, uh, the reason is, is uh, there's many people in this group, um, but as many of you are probably aware, Facebook doesn't show everything to everybody. So by hitting the like button, they'll be more likely to show uh, the rest of the people in the group that uh, this little old video is here. So if you just hit the like on that, uh, we'd really appreciate it. Um, so anyway, let's let's get into it. So um, I'm glad Lori's here because one of the the question I only got one so far that someone asked me um, was what is the best diet for someone over the age of 60? Now that is a fantastic question. It is a very common question. And um, if you don't know, I am 58, Lori is 59, yeah, I gave her age away, sorry, see the dirty look I got? Um, so we're, we're in that age range, right? So we get it, and your question is really good because things do change as you get older, and a lot of people don't understand that. Uh, you can't eat what you did in 20 or 30 uh, and expect the same things to happen, right? Correct. So, uh, what's, let's talk about it. So, Lori, what would you say is well, the best diet? All right. So, as coaches, we know what to do. We know how to do it. Um, somehow, sometimes, often, oftentimes, we, um, we like our food. We're not going to lie. We like to eat. We like the, uh, the foods that we're eating. We like the flavors. We like the taste. But the bottom line is... Um, it's not what we're eating, it's how much of it that we're eating. And I think when you look at what we eat on any given day, now we do know that eating three donuts for breakfast is not good. I didn't do that today. What? Um, but, you know, an egg, an egg bake, uh, you know, eggs are better than three donuts. I mean, there's... They are? They are. There's eggs and donuts, I know. However, you know, we were not, we didn't get this age being naive and, and I don't want to say we're all stupid, but we know what we should be doing. We know how to do it. We just have to really start taking into consideration that as we're getting older, we may be slowing down a little bit. So we're not as active as we were when we were 20 or 30 and can eat three donuts and you know, go run a half marathon. Right, I used to eat a dozen. I know. So, you know, and that's the thing. You think of, of what we used to do way back when and, and where we're at now, and we still may be doing it. 
Um, so it really boils down to how much of what we're eating. It's not really what we're eating. I mean, we went out to dinner last week, and um, they gave us um, great portions. You know, three, yeah. four onion rings. I took the biggest one, and she I, ate do, a, she, I, I do apologize no, for that. She ate, <laughs> they pro there was probably there more like four. six. Or no, four. There, there were four, four onion rings. I think I got one. No, he had two, <laughs> but I do apologize for taking the biggest onion ring because it was like this big. But even the size, uh, the portion size of French fries were probably about the size of the palm of my hand, and that's what a portion size is. I didn't get any of those. By you the way. did too. Stop. But you have to start really consciously thinking about how much food you are taking in, especially if you're not as active as you once were, because you know you have to. You ri I mean, exercise and diet goes hand in hand. You got to make sure you're drinking your water, you know, 64 ounces or more um, a day. And, and making smart choices. So what is the best diet out there? I think it, the, it's the mindset that, um, it's that diet mindset of what we, you know, perceive. This is good. This is not good. Um, and I was talking with one of the clients the other day who had, and we all tried all these fad diets, you know. Um, so if you took like one or two little bits and pieces out of every different meal or diet plan that you've tried, like the grapefruit diet, the coffee diet, um, you know, South Beach, North Beach, Mediterranean, all these things, and you kind of like factor in what, what worked for you, like eating a grapefruit over eating a donut. Okay, so that was good for you. So you look at um, you look at those fad diets. Fad diets are just what they are. They're fads, just like bell bottoms. They're, that's a fad. They go out as quick as they come in. So it's really teaching yourself the right way to eat and the portions. Um, and one of the things that I do, and I make sure I do it every night, is before dinner is made, I set up my coffee so I don't have to go back in that kitchen after dinner only to put the, the leftovers away or, you know, put the dishes in the dishwasher. But to hang out in the kitchen at like 8, 9 o'clock and, you know, your kitchen is filled with stuff, that's where... You can fall into, oh, what's a cookie going to do? Well, a, a cookie's going to do a lot at, you know, well, it's not going to do a lot, a lot. But, you know, one cookie leads to two or three at 9 o'clock at night. So, um, you know, it's it's that mindset of what we have to do. Wouldn't you agree? I, I agree. And so when I get this question, um, there's a few ways I'll answer it. But when somebody says to me, you know, what is the best diet? My standard answer is the one you'll do, okay? Um, you know, speaking to what Lori talked about with the fad diets, there's tons of them out there, right? We all know what they are. She mentioned a few of them. Um, and the reason they're fads is not because they don't work, because most of them actually will work. Remember, when you're trying to lose weight, it comes down to calories in versus calories out. So all of them, at least the, good, the most of them, I should say, not all of them, focus on cutting your calories. So yeah, they will work. The problem is they're not sustainable, which is why they're fats, okay? I always talk about Atkins. If you remember, and if you're in this group, you're old enough to remember, Atkins was all the rage in the early 2000s. Mm -hmm. So millions upon millions upon millions of people were on it. I ask you this, do you know anyone that's still doing it since then? I don't. All right. I did it. I didn't. I did it. I, and I actually, I had quite a bit of success on it. Yeah. Um, because it kind of fell into how I eat normally anyway. It wasn't a stretch for me to do Atkins. Um, but they don't. But these these diets don't teach you how to eat. You know. Right. Like when I was on Atkins, okay, so I wasn't having bread, so I had three hamburger patties. You know, I, I so I eliminated the bread and I increased that protein and fat and stuff. Um, but that's not normal eating, and and that's the thing that you have to look at is what what normal eating really is, and that's where I mean you want to jumpstart that weight loss. That's great, um, 
and once you start seeing those results, but again, you have to remember, like Dan was saying, calories in, calories out, as well as you want to be able to enjoy the foods you like and still be healthy and, 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 and lose weight. And again, it's all about your portion sizes um, and, and eating the right foods, to be honest with you. Um, you can have a slice of pizza and be fully satisfied with, you know, a you side can. salad. No, I know, I know. But, you know... We're it's, different sides, But that's too. the reality, right. though. I, you know, I'm not... I cannot sustain um, life on protein bars and all these little packaged, you know, frozen dinners and things like that. That's, that's not sustainable for me because I like my pasta. I like my pizza. And, you know, so that's the reality of, um, of where where you want to look at what is truly going to work for you but you also want to if you're going to be on this you know health kick and losing weight and diet you want to work out you want to make sure you're getting that fitness in um taking walks i mean now's the t perfect time to get out there and take walks and um walk with a purpose don't walk and look at the landscape of everybody oh look at that let's sit here um but it's what <laughs> Well, you, I've you, never looked at the landscape. No, I know, but, but anyway. you know, but the, but the thing is, you you just want to keep, um, you got to be true to yourself and really get on that that you know the the program that's going to work for you, and that's where cutting your calories and um, but not know. drastically cutting them. I Correct. think the mistake you'll see with a lot of those fad diets is a couple things. One, and Lori kind of touched on this, they're not sustainable because. Life's going to get in the way. So whether it's Atkins or now the, the new one is keto, which in a sense, essentially keto is Atkins the first two weeks, right? The extreme Atkins, um, where you have no carbs. And that's not healthy. Um, but it's also not sustainable. So, you know, I've, I've worked with a lot of people that have done keto. Um, and some have had some mild success with it, but it's not sustainable long term because you go out with a bunch of friends uh, or you go to someone's house and they bring out pie or you're at a restaurant and everybody else is having dessert. You can't have it because it doesn't fall within the keto. Or you unwrap that protein bar that you brought. Or whatever, <laughs> right. It's just not, you don't feel right, okay. Or another example would be uh, intermittent fasting, which is fantastic. Okay, the problem is if your window is from, let's say, 8 to 4 p.m. and you're going out to dinner with your husband that night, are you just going to sit there and drink a bunch of water? Probably not. Um, so that's, they're, they're effective. They can work. We're kind of neutral on it all. Okay, we don't, I don't feel there is a best diet. It's what will work for you. Right. But Lori is spot on, right? It's what is going to work with your lifestyle, right? What are the things you want to enjoy? Um, Lori likes bread. I like bread. We have bread, okay? Um, Lori makes homemade bread all the time. Things like that, I don't want to miss out on. And if I were to do one of those crash diets, I might not be able to have that. And what happens when you can't have something? You have more. It makes you want it even more, right? So uh, we did have a question pop up. Terry asked, what do we snack on then? Uh, Terry, great question. So I'll answer first if the Lori's okay with that. Um, my snacks tend to be on the protein side, all right? Um, for my goals, my lifestyle, what I want to achieve, I have to consume a lot of protein, okay? Um, so I th tend to have things like protein shakes. I tend to have um, things like, well, she mentioned protein bars. That is something I will have. Um, I like to make protein uh, energy balls, and if you go through the group, we have a ton of recipes. Uh, basically, every Wednesday we post a recipe, um, and there's various snacks in there that that I have regularly. So those recipes that we post are ones we consume. Well, that one you made yesterday, that blueberry whip. Yeah. So, and that one's coming that up. Really so, um, I made a yeah. It's a protein. Uh, fluff it's called protein fluff it's a it goes back years and years and years it's a bodybuilder thing but the truth of the matter is it's it's like cheating on your diet right but it's healthy and that's that's the thing with snacks is you want to look for things um, 
Uh, let me just step back for a second, just because a thought just popped in my brain. We're alive, that's what happens. Um, I Let me redefine how I call a meal, because I think this is important for people to understand. So, the normal connotation people have is that we eat three meals a day and snacks, right? Some people have two snacks, some three, some one, doesn't matter. I don't look at it that way. I look at it each time I consume food as a meal. So in my case, I tend to eat five or six times a day, all right? Each one of them is a, quote, meal, all right? Um, my goal with all of them is, and this is something for someone over 50, I think is crucial. You've got to have protein with every meal. It is amazing to me because we work with people, uh, whether it's trying to lose weight, improve their nutrition, feel better, and so forth. Uh, and when we have food journals, because uh, we do have people keep them, not all the time, but in most cases, the number one thing that I see people don't do is eat enough protein, not even close to the amounts they're supposed to have. How much um, are we supposed to have, Dan? Well, uh, again, it depends Good on your question. goals. The the I'm going to round some of this stuff. The minimum to stay alive, and this is what the government will tell you if you look at any of that, is for women between 50 and 55 grams, and for men, uh, 60 to 65. Okay. Now, I read somewhere it's one gram Per pound well, of that's body weight. the standard recommendation you'll hear from um, nutrition people, right? Okay. Is look for one gram per pound, or if you're trying to lose weight, one gram per target goal weight, which is a whole other, whole other discussion. We could be here for three okay. hours on that one. But um, when you don't get enough protein and you're over 50, there's a thing, and if you've if you're in this group and you read my post, I talk about it often because it's such a big deal. Sarcopenia is what it's called. It's muscle loss as we get older, in a nutshell. If you don't give your body the building blocks it needs, which are the amino acids within the proteins, you're going to start losing muscle mass. That's also what happens when you crash diet and go really low calorie. Your body will start pulling calories or energy actually from your muscles making them smaller which in turn slows your metabolism and so on and so forth again whole other video we can do um, so when it comes to protein what I always tell people is you can't go from 0 to 60 either you know if you've only eaten and it's not uncommon for us to see that I've seen people eating 30 grams of calories or protein a day I've had people eat less than that all right um, they're not going to be healthy doing that. You want to make sure you get your protein in, which is why I focus, in my particular case, about 30 to 35 grams of protein every meal. She just hit our shredder. Um, live TV. Sorry. Um, I'm trying to reposition my yeah, legs. For someone like Lori, who's a little bit smaller than me, or a lot of bit smaller than me, um, she doesn't need that much. But that you get the gist of where we're going with it. So, it's, you want to make sure with your snacks that you're looking for, to answer Terry's question, looking for things with protein in them, first of all. Um, again, it doesn't have to be meat. Everybody thinks of protein as meat. It doesn't have to be. Um, as I said, I do protein shakes. I make the protein energy balls. Protein shakes are great because if you have that uh, need for chocolate or something oh. sweet, um, to just make a chocolate protein shake will curb that um you know that need to have that chocolate and you can add you know chop it up with ice and stuff and uh then it's like thick and frothy it's a frothy word frothy the word <laughs> and yes i deliberately did that <laughs> um but it makes you think that maybe you're having a milkshake so there's things that you can do that ki that can kind of um turn things around for you so you that hey you know okay you know they're having ice cream I'm gonna have a chocolate protein shake I'm gonna add ice to it I'm gonna make it thick or I'll do vanilla and I'll throw some frozen fruit in there and then I'll feel like okay I'm not missing out on on that mm -hmm. uh, especially if you really are trying to cut your sugar and stuff and let's face it I don't know how many of you have gone and gotten blood work lately but Every time I go to the doctors or I hear people have gone to the doctors, they get their blood work, they're in that pre-diabetic um, yeah. category and they're ready to put them on, you know, metformin and all this medication. 
And, you know, all you have to do is change your diet and, and work out and things will start changing for you. So let us know if you have questions about, you know, what can you have, what, you know, what would you recommend. Um, and like Dan said, scroll through because we do post a lot of recipes. I've, I've got some great ones coming up. Um, and they're, you know, on the sweet and savory um, spectrum. So that way you feel like if you went to a party and you brought this, um, it's healthy. You can enjoy it. You don't have to tell everybody well, it's healthy. Why don't you talk about, so Easter is this weekend. It is. As we're, so we all know Easter is a holiday for most people, not everyone. But... Um, you want to go through Easter and not have some treats, right? If you're going, we're going to uh, Lori's cousin's for dinner. Um, I'm not going to go there and not enjoy it. So you're making. So I'm making a couple different things. Um, I'm making um, cookies. Um, cookies. I See? am cookies. But again, uh, and they're going to have a Hershey's kiss in it. But again. Oh no. I know. But uh, I mean, Hershey's it's kiss. not one of those big chocolate bunnies that you know take up you know 50 inches of your cabinet space it's a little hershey kiss you know you you 50 inches is taller than you were i know <laughs> do you know that i am five foot long subs in height from subway okay well yes yeah. so you get do a foot long or foot long sub that's me then I they, eat then they actually them. find out they're only 10 or 11 inches so yeah I guess it still it does yeah. yeah but anyway so again um I'm not going to eat 25 cookies. I may have one or two, but I'm going to enjoy it. But they're healthier versions. But they're too. healealthier version. You know, but when yet, you she's make still got the kiss in them. So, I do. Yeah. But but you, you can take the kiss off and just throw it away. But oh. the thing is, um, when you are making your own food, it, like even like bread, it's just you know five ingredients. Read the ingredients on your bread pack. It's like oh my god, and you know homemade bread is five ingredients, but when you when you are making something, you're in full control of of what you're putting in. There are substitutes for sugar. There's you know there's the fat free uh, cream cheese. There's so many things. Fat free sour little, cream. Little changes. Nobody right even knows. Um, you know, and if you know, we're talking about the whey shakes and stuff. If you like creamer and sugar in your coffee, and you want to just ditch that, add the whey protein to your coffee. Right there, every day. And it gives you the sweetness and just like you were having cream and sugar in your coffee. So you don't have to really, you know, eliminate everything to lose weight. It, it's making good conscientious choices of, you know, substitutions or even elimination, especially if you want to eliminate something from your, you know, that it's really unhealthy, um, you know, there's ways to do it without, you know, sacrificing and eliminating to the point where it's, you know, you set yourself up for failure, you know, on day one because you, you don't have that in place. You, you always you want restrict to restrict yourself and right. make, just make, you know, uh, to Lori's point, like I like potato chips, love them. They're not the best for me. So pepperoni chips I make and I usually have to fight her off because they're so good. They're very good. And but I'll, it gives me protein. Right. A little bit healthier. Uh, you and you're making them with turkey pepperoni. And I'm making them with turkey pepperoni. Yep. So uh, the fat actually comes out of it as you bake them. It's very simple to make up. The recipe's in the Facebook group. Yep. Uh, but basically, you just take turkey pepperoni, put it on a cookie pan. I like to put parchment paper underneath it. Um, and bake it 8, 10, 12 minutes. Depends how much you have, how thick they are. Um, they turn into chips. Most of the fat has drained out because you've heated it, um, and they are so darn good. I'd rather have them than chips. So, you know, there's another example of a snack for Terry, but it's little things like that. Look for opportunities as opposed to looking for a specific diet, one of those super strict ones. They don't work, folks. People uh, don't succeed on them. They may, remember, you Well, they'll succeed in the beginning. Short term. Yeah, short term, but once you start, you know, especially now with, you know, the season changing and stuff and, you know, parties are going to be happening where you're going to go and, you know, oh my God, I can't go, I can't eat, you know. It, it, you got to learn how to eat and eat the right way. Um, 
And exactly. that that's what's really important. And maybe we can do another show on, you know, we can do something in the kitchen on, on you know, looking at portion controls and truly learning how to eat. Yeah, the, the ultimate answer to the question, what is the best diet, as I said, is the one that will work for you. And that means including the foods you like, yep. including them in the right portions, as Lori is saying, so that you don't miss out, but then you also keep things under control. It really does come down to calories in versus calories out. You could eat nothing. I talk about this all the time. Nothing but Coca-Cola and, since it's Easter, peeps. You oh, could. my God. <laughs> I was trying to think of two really bad oh, things. There's two there you have really it. bad things. Okay. Oh. But if you ate less of them than your body burns during a day, right, oh. you will lose weight. Uh, will you be healthy? Absolutely not, right? That's the other thing um, is it's when we talk as nutrition coaches, we aren't talking you know, weight loss. We're not talking just weight loss. We're talking nutrition also because it's not just getting the weight off. It's making sure you're healthy and happy when and you're And lifestyle changes. And You've got to change your life. That's really what it comes down to. So, Was there um, another question? No other questions. Uh, and I was trying to keep it short. We're at about 25-ish or so Ooh. minutes. You got anything else you want to add? Do not eat peeps and cola for Easter Sunday. <laughs> well, you know, and he, I will end with this because Wait, um, one year for <coughs> Lent, my, my kids loved those push-up freeze pops. And, yeah, you know, they lived on them. And I had them all year round in my freezer. So um, my oldest daughter, Melissa, wanted to, she said, I'm giving up freeze pops for Lent. So for the entire time of Lent, she did not have a single freeze pop. And this kid lost 10 pounds. And That's when a you, lot of freeze pops. Well, yes, they lived on these things. And when I say she ate freeze pops, she ate probably five to eight a day, you know. Um, and, and that's a lot of sugar. And her teeth weren't rotten. She had no cavities, which was even amazing. But when you look at that, when you give up that one bad where you know you shouldn't have it as much as you do, like eight freeze pops in a day, you know one is what you should have. Right. But... Yeah, so... Um, yeah, one's not going to do much Right, damage. so you look at, you know, again, it's a mindset, <coughs> mindful um, diet that works for you. Enjoying the foods you eat in proper portions. Um, and then then you'll get through life much easier. Yes, you will. Yeah. On that <coughs> Sorry, I got a little tickle on my throat. So, um, hopefully that was some good information for you. Uh, take over for a second so I can get another drink because I'm losing it. So what we're going to do is we're going to be back weekly doing these live <coughs> videos um, starring me. Oh, That's who you want to see because oh, really? he told me to take over. So, what, so yeah. why so, not? <laughs> one of the things that we're looking at doing, um, and we don't want to give too much away, is um, one of the reasons we're starting this. This is kind of a test run for us, guys. We're looking at, um, believe it or not, we're going to be doing a, I'll call it a podcast um, it's actually a streamed radio show um, called, of all things, Living Fit After 50. Um, so what we're looking for from you guys is what do you want us to talk about? I kind of threw this out there. and Like I said, I got one question. But we can talk all day long, um, and we're very good at it. Okay. Um, <laughs> but we want to talk about what you guys want to know, right? So feel free to ask any questions you have. Um, and then the other thing I'm going to just throw out there is this group is as much for you guys as it is for us. So uh, I had someone mention to me that they wanted to post something in the group. They sent me a message. Is it okay for me to do that? Absolutely it is, guys. You're welcome to post in there. We want you to post on your own. You, you should be able to. It is a private group, all right, which means people outside the group can't see anything in it. Um, we switched it to that a few months back because... Uh, Facebook changed their algorithm and rules, and we were getting people from all over the world scamming. So we had to change it from a public to a private group. So we can't, you can't share anything out of the group anymore. But the, the positive to it also is you can talk in there and feel safe. It's a safe space for you. You've got two experts here. Um, there are some others in there. Um, and, you know, we want this group to be interactive. We want you guys to feel comfortable 
posting whatever it is you want. If you want to talk about, you know, whatever workout you did, um, or how you're eating, or questions on any of that stuff, this is a great place for you to do that, as opposed to listening to, you know, your office mate in a cubicle over who's running some fad multi-level marketing diet, um, and who knows nothing about nutrition, but is coaching you, all right, because they're coaches. Um, you know, between the two of us, we've got over 50 years of experience. 50? Uh, over 50? I'm only 20. What are you saying? No, okay. Um, anyway. Anyway, so, so about this about this group, and, and we say it all the time, we say it in our, our members group at our fitness studio, the more active you are, the more successful you're going to be. I can't yes. say that again. But say it you again. will be very successful the more active you are because it's it, you're it's not just you on this journey right. there are hundreds of you guys in this group so take advantage of everybody um, there you know what works for them what doesn't work if it didn't work for you maybe somebody did it a different way and it you know yes. and this is where we yes. we share those ideas so get involved in the living fit after 50 group post up We'll chime in, and uh, we're going to sign off because yep. we're talking We're going to really call long. it there. So, guys, thank you for listening. Again, please like the video because there's a few hundred people in this group, and Facebook shows it to less than 10% of the people, somewhere in that area. So if you like it, it'll show it to more people within the group. That's I it. think that's it. All right. All right. Till next time, Coach Dan, I'm out. I'm out. Have a great day, guys.